Finally, earlier this week, Airtel was accused of giving in to religious bigotry on social media. Everyone, including Omar Abdullah, jumped on the bandwagon and voiced their opinion against Airtel. For those of you who might have missed it, and it seems unlikely that you might have, it started on Monday when a customer named Pooja complained about the service she was receiving on Airtel on Twitter. And this is something a lot of us do quite often. The company responded from its online team from a sign-off saying Shoeb. Shoeb responded saying, let us know what the problem is and we'll get in touch and we'll solve the problem. The customer in question, Pooja, asked for her complaint to be resolved by a Hindu customer service agent instead. Shockingly, this is what she said, dear Shoeb, you're a Muslim and I have no faith in your work ethics because the Quran may have a different version of customer service. Requesting you to assign a Hindu representative for my request. Now, first of all, I must point out to Pooja, there is no holy book that has any sort of manual on customer service unless you're referring to Philip Kotler's Guide to Marketing and you consider that your holy book, then maybe. But you're completely and utterly out of line and totally shameless. What happened next was Airtel's sign-off in a response that came after that from someone called Gagan Jodh. Everyone on Twitter assumed that Airtel had given in to this completely outrageous demand. Everyone was outraged. And while the customer is king, nobody knew how a telecom company could have even given in to such religious bigotry. And that became the new point of debate. Now, Airtel maintained that it did not change the advisor because of this request that had come from the customer. But Boom Live, which is a website that does fact-checking, put up this story on its website that answered the most important question. Did Airtel actually manage to change a Muslim customer service representative named Shoaib to a non-Muslim named Gagan Joth simply because the customer asked for it. Now, in order to understand that, Boom has put out the facts and we're grateful to Boom. So this is where it is. On the 18th of June, at nine minutes past noon in the afternoon, Pooja Singh complained to customer service, like I told you. At 12.18, Airtel responded, assuring her that they will get back to her and this was Shoaib's message. At 3 o'clock that day, Pooja tweeted out her rant to Shoaib. I refuse to read it again. And at 3.25, Etel responded with a message from Gagan Joth. But on closer look, Boom found a very important tweet buried under the sea of nonsense that nobody saw. Gagan Joth had in fact responded for the first time at half past 12. And it was two and a half hours later that Pooja put out her controversial rant. So clearly what had happened, like it happens in most of our offices, is that Pooja had tweeted and she got two responses from two different people. She got Shoaib and Gagan Jodh not too far away from each other. But she chose for some reason to ignore the tweet from Gagan Jodh and to rant and make Shoaib the target of her venom and her poison. Now why she did that is still not known because she hasn't responded to the questions that Boom has sent her. But the bigger question we have to ask ourselves, and it's an uncomfortable question, is that are we really that country that allows this sort of religious bigotry to now be publicly aired? But what we have established is that Airtel is not a bigot. And I do hope that Airtel and all of the other telecom service providers refuse to service Pooja and no longer give her a SIM card or an internet connection. And so she's no longer able to go back on Twitter and spill her venom. All of you would be doing us a massive, massive favor. To Pooja, please, breathe. Nobody needs to hear about your hate. Put it away. If you really feel that kind of hate, I would strongly recommend that you either meditate or see a psychiatrist because there's obviously something wrong with you.